Amy Farrell Weiss got her start in San Francisco politics in 2011 when she was allowed to join, or when she joined her neighbors in pushing back against a Chase Bake that was allowed to break the law in two ways in order to push out two local businesses without due process of community input. Shortly after, Amy founded a nonprofit in 2011 called Neighbors Enriching De Visadero in order to proactively support inclusive, culturally enriching, and sustainable development in her neighborhood and through citywide policy. Amy revolutionized San Francisco democracy over the last year by forming a coalition of grassroots candidates to challenge Ed Lee in the 2015 mayor's race. Good afternoon, Bay Area for Bernie. How many people here have had enough of pay to play politics? How many people have had enough of elected officials that serve the needs of corporate interests over the needs of people and planet? So join me in this little ditty. We're not gonna take it. No, we ain't gonna take it. We're not gonna take it anymore. Now those are the words of Twisted Sister, but they might as well be the words of Thomas Jefferson. Because Thomas Jefferson said that every new generation needs a political revolution, did he not? And Thomas Jefferson also said that banks that are for profit are more dangerous to us than standing armies. And that's why in 2011, when a Chase Bank was able, with the blessing of Ed Lee's administration, to break the law in two ways in my neighborhood, to push out two local businesses, one of them being really the epitome of the American dream in San Francisco, in order to serve whose interests? A Chase Bank? How is that possible? And I informed myself about Glass-Steagall, and I informed myself about how Chase was investing in dirty energy, and I said, enough is enough. I'm going to actually join with my neighbors to push back against that. And guess what? We lost that battle. But I decided instead of sitting on the sidelines and complaining and critiquing about the Lee administration and these kinds of issues around development and saying, oh, gentrification is happening and oh, people are being displaced, but we're just going to complain about it. No, I said, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to dedicate my life to supporting what I want to support, which is inclusive, culturally enriching, and sustainable development in my neighborhood. And that's what I worked on for four years. So then last year, it was in December of 2014, that I, I decided, you know, right now, the way that the media and political insiders are looking at politics in San Francisco is to say that it's a blood sport and a money sport. And so instead of just catering to that and complaining about that, I said, you know what? I'm going to enter this race. <laughs> I'm going to actually run for mayor, and I'm going to challenge Ed Lee and his administration, and I'm going to put forth a new way forward about collaborative leadership, because in San Francisco we have ranked choice voting, and that means that you can vote for your top three candidates. And it turned out that established candidates stayed out of this race, such as Mark Leno, and you know why? He'll actually tell you because his financial analyst said that it wasn't going to be possible for him to beat Ed Lee, or that if he entered, that he would be lambasted in, this, in these negative ads. And so I decided not to wait around for a more established candidate to enter. I decided I'm gonna enter into this race for a few key reasons. And one of those was to revolutionize democracy in San Francisco and to say, I want to figure out how we can collaboratively work together in order to analyze the key issues of our time and actually come up with solutions for them. Guess what? I did it. <laughs> I did it with a lot of the help of the people who are here today. Who voted one, two, three to replace Ed Lee? Yeah. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the media and the democratic process in San Francisco right now. And this is something that Bernie's faced at the national level. After those debates, you know, with Hillary Clinton, CNN was saying that Hillary won. But if you look at the numbers after the debates, 
we saw that his people for the first time got a chance to hear his message and his popularity rose after those. But why is CNN reporting that Hillary won? That doesn't make any sense. And so in San Francisco, it was myself and Francisco Herrera and Stuart Shuffman that decided to take a stand for our city together. And the media, even the progressive media, even the progressive media, said that Ed Lee was running unopposed the entire time. The examiner actually put all over the city Ed Lee's face on their front page and it said no contest three months beforehand or three days before the election no contest this was in the midst of us building up a grassroots revolution in San Francisco where we have already over 11,000 people that joined our vote one two three to replace Ed Lee group and I talked to literally thousands of people over the last year, and guess what? how many votes that we got? Without any media coverage, with, the, with them actually working against us and saying that there was no race, we got 60,000 votes nearly between us. Ed Lee got 90,000. Is that a mandate for Ed Lee? No, not at all. And so what we need to do moving forward, this is, this is the kind of work that I do. I experience something, I go through it, and then I figure out how do we iterate upon this? How do we heal the system? And so I also went through the Democratic uh, endorsement process. I decided to register as a Democrat, even though I was declined to state before this, because I saw that this was an opportunity for me to speak truth and shine a light on the Democratic clubs in San Francisco. And so when the DCCC of San Francisco, which is not right now run by the Real Estate Association and by Airbnb, we need to change that because they put out their Democratic slate card and they say that they represent the democracy in San Francisco. And a lot of people just look at that and they blindly follow with what the DCCC says right now. And so when the DCCC, before candidates even had a chance to enter into this race, back in June or it was maybe it was late May they said they were going to do an early endorsement for Ed Lee and I got up there in front of the DCCC and all those people and I said if you truly believe in the democratic process you will not do an early endorsement for Ed Lee before you even know who the other candidates are and you interview them and so we need to hold the DCCC accountable for any future elections that before they endorse someone, they have to actually do what their values are, which is participate in democracy. How is it that the DCCC is not doing that right now? So what I did in about, I think it was around July, I decided, you know, I'm gonna frame the top 13 issues that are facing San Francisco from Clean Power SF to housing affordability, renting in SF, to clean power, to Black Lives Matter, all of these things. And I framed these top 13 issues, and then I asked people in this open-ended survey, what are your top three issues? And then from the 13 that I framed, why don't you go ahead and say if you want this to be a mayoral debate, or if you want there to be a teach-in around this, or there should be a solutions forum around these issues. And I sent that to all the other candidates, including Ed Lee. I sent that to the media. I sent that to all the Democratic clubs and neighborhood organizations. They didn't send it out. But I created a framework through this mayor's race for how we can move forward in San Francisco elections. And even you know throughout the Bay Area, we can actually use this framework so that we're not just talking about whether or not a candidate is serious because they have money. We're actually analyzing the issues of our time and working together to co-create solutions. And that's what Bernie Sanders wants. He's saying that, you know, he, he always says in his speeches, right, that it's, it's really not just going to be about me getting elected. It's about a political revolution, grassroots style, where people actually start paying attention to the issues of their time and don't just critique the candidates that are running but participate in creating these solutions. And so that's a real passion of mine, is taking the national and taking it to the neighborhoods. And that's what we all have to do around the issues of our time. The Bay Area is the epicenter of inequity right now. San Francisco is the epicenter of inequity. And we have to be the leaders that we've been waiting for, a la Grace Lee Boggs, am I right? 
So thank you so much. Um, you know, we have we have six elections coming up for district supervisors in 2016 that will align with uh, when we vote for Bernie Sanders for president in November. And so let's go ahead and learn from what just happened to us with the media blacking us out because we're just grassroots candidates. And let's make the news. Let's be the news. Let's be the leaders that we've been waiting for. Let's feel the burn! Woo!